Okay, so you see this guy right here. This guy is Lord Thomas Cochrane. This guy is probably one of the coolest uh, history people in the entire world. I know, right? It's crazy. This guy, he was a uh, admiral in the British Navy, and he was also an admiral in the Republic of Chile, in the Empire of Brazil, and the Kingdom of Greece. He um, did a bunch of stuff that is very memorable, though he doesn't get a lot of recognition, but he really should. So this project is over this crazy awesome guy right here. Thomas Cochrane was born at Ensfield near Hamilton, South Lancashire, Scotland. On July 23, 1793, at the age of 17, Cochrane joined the Navy as a midshipman, spending his first months at Sheerness in a six-rate frigate, the 28-gun HMS Hind, commanded by his m uncle, Captain Alexander Cochrane. After several transfers in America and a return home in 1798, he was assigned as 8th Lieutenant on Lord Keith's flagship, HMS Barfleur in the Mediterranean. During his service on Barfleur, Cochrane was court-martialed for showing disrespect to Philip Beaver, the ship's first lieutenant. The board reprimanded him for a flippancy. This was the first public manifestation of a pattern of Cochrane being unable to get along with many of his superiors, subordinates, employers, and colleagues, and several navies in Parliament, even those with whom he had much in common and who should have been net neutral allies. In 1800, Cochrane commanded the prize crew taking the captured French vessel Jean Rowe to the British base of Mahone. The ship was almost lost in a storm with Cochrane and his brother Archibald going aloft in place of crew who were mostly ill. On March 28, 1800, Cochrane, having been promoted to commander, took command of the brig sloop HMS Speedy. Later that year, a Spanish warship disguised as a merchant ship almost captured him. He escaped by flying a Danish flag and fending off a boarding by claiming his ship was plague-ridden. Chased by an enemy frigate and knowing it would follow him in the night by any glimmer of light from Speedy, he placed a lantern on a barrel and let it float away. The enemy frigate followed the light and Speedy escaped. One of his most notable exploits was the capture of the Spanish Zabet frigate El Gamo. On May 6, 1801, El Gamo carried 32 guns and 319 men compared with Speedy's 14 guns and 54 men. Cochrane flew an American flag and approached so closely to El Gamo that its guns could not depress to fire on the Speedy's hull. The Spanish tried to board and take over the ship, but whenever the Spanish were about to board, Cochrane pulled away briefly and fired on the concentrated boarding parties with his ship's guns. Eventually, Cochrane boarded El Gamo, despite being outnumbered about 5 to 1, and captured her. In Speedy's 13-month cruise, Cochrane captured, burned, or drove ashore 53 ships before three French ships of the line under Admiral Charles Alexander Lenoir captured him on July 3, 1801. After many conflicts in the British government, Cochrane left the UK in official disgrace, but that did not end his naval career. Accompanied by Lady Cochrane and their two children, he reached Valparaiso on November 28, 1818. Chile was rapidly organizing its new navy for its War of Independence. On December 11, 1818, at the request of Chilean leader Bernardo O'Higgins, Cochrane became a Chilean citizen, was appointed vice admiral, and took command of the Chilean navy in Chile's War of Independence against Spain. He was the first vice admiral of Chile, and Cochrane reorganized the Chilean navy, introducing British naval customs and he took command of the frigate O'Higgins and blockaded and raided the coast of Peru as he had those of France and Spain. Now, this is really cool. On his own initiative, he organized and led the capture of Valdivia, despite only having 300 men and two ships to deploy against seven large forts, though he failed in his attempt to capture the Chileo Archipelago for Chile. But this, this is crazy. This guy, he only had, like, what was it? 300 men and two ships against seven large forts with almost 300 men each. And then the last town, it was just a big town, Valdivia, he rushed in there with 20 guys on horses, him and 19 other men, and they captured that entire town with 20 guys. To the um, 
Spanish in South America. They called him the devil, and they seriously thought he was a devil. Whenever they saw him, they dropped their guns and surrendered immediately. So this guy wasn't someone that you wanted to really fight. Loose words from his wife Katie resulted in a rumor that Cochrane had made plans to free Napoleon from his exile on St. Saint Helena and make him ruler of a unified South American state. This could not have been true because Charles, the supposed envoy bearing the rumored plans, had been killed two months before his reported departure to Europe. Cochrane left the service of the Chilean Navy on November 29th, 1822. And despite that guy getting killed, uh, Napoleon was in no shape to even lead, and he was pretty much a lifeless body just sitting in a room. And he later died of illness, probably like half a year later. After the war in Chile, Cochrane took command of the Brazilian Navy on March 21st, 1823, and its flagship, Pedro I. He blockaded the Portuguese in Bahá'í, confronted them at the Battle of May 4th, and forced them to evacuate the province in a vast convoy of ships which Cochrane's men attacked as they crossed the Atlantic. Cochrane sailed to Man Maranhão on his own initiative and bluffed the garrison into surrender by claiming that a vast and mythical Brazilian fleet and army were over the horizon. He sent a subordinate, Captain John Pascal Grenfell, to Belém do Para to use the same bluff and extract a Portuguese surrender. As a result of Cochrane's efforts, Brazil became totally de facto independent and free of any Portuguese troops. On Cochrane's return to Rio de de Janeiro in 1824, Emperor Pedro I rewarded the officers, the officer by granting him the non-hereditary title of Marques de Manhau in the title Brazil. He was also awarded an accompanied coat of arms. Cochrane went to Greece to support its fight for independence from the Ottoman Empire, which had deployed an army raised in Egypt to suppress the Greek rebellion. Between March 1827 in December 1828, he took an active role in the, in the campaign, but met with limited success due to the poor discipline of the Greek soldiers and seamen. One of his sub subordinates, Captain Hastings, attacked Ottoman forces at the Gulf of Lepanto, which indirectly led to the intervention by Great, force, by Great Britain, France, and Russia. They succeeded in destroying the Turco-Egyptian fleet at the Battle of Navarino, and the war was ended under mediation of the Great Powers. Greece was probably the only campaign in Cochrane's naval career in which the results of his efforts were disappointingly slight. At the end of the war, he resigned his commission and returned to Great Britain. Cochrane inherited his peerage following his father's death on July 1, 1831, becoming the 10th tenth, tenth Earl of Dundonald. He was restored to the Royal Navy lists on May 2, 1832, as a Rear Admiral of the Blue. Cochrane's full return to the Royal Navy service was delayed by his refusal to take a command until his knighthood had been restored, which took 15 years. And after that, he received many, many, many more awards and promotions. On May 22, 1847, Queen Victoria reinstated him as a knight in the Order of the Bath. He returned to the Royal Navy, serving as Commander-in-Chief of the North America and West Indies Station from 1848 to 1851. During the Crimean War, the government considered him for a command in the Baltic, but decided that there was too high a chance that Cochrane would risk the fleet in a daring attack. On November 6, 1854, he was appointed to the Honorary Office of Rear Admiral of the United Kingdom, an office that he retained until his death. In his final years, Cochrane wrote his autobiography in collaboration with G.B. Earp. With his health deteriorating, in 1860, he twice had to undergo painful surgery for kidney stones. He died during the second operation on October 31, 1860, in Kensington. He was buried in Westminster Abbey, where his grave is in the central part of the, of the nave. Each year in May, representatives of the Chilean Navy hold a wreath-laying ceremony at his grave.